Hi, my name is Ross Miller and welcome to the Speedwell Garage, Parkton's friendliest Studebaker Packard workshop. Today here at Speedwell Garage, I thought we'd do a little tutorial on the old-fashioned three on the tree or the three-speed column shift because it causes people some problems and yeah, if you weren't born in that era, it's a little bit strange. So, so I'm, I'm wondering, today we have a lot of stick shifts on the floor. Right. Why did they ever put it on the column in the first place? Okay, so imagine you're living in 1939 and you have five children and you're driving mm, a Plymouth with a floor shift. The person in the middle is going to get raked by the floor shift. So big families, cars often sat three across. It was a great idea to put the gear shift up on the column so you could have three people sitting across in the front without getting uh, their legs smashed every time dad shifted the gears. Ah, very good. All right, so I, I've assembled here a small, uh, small collection of three-speed on the tree cars. We have a 1950 Studebaker Champion. We have a 1953 Packard uh, Clipper Deluxe. Uh, made into a flatbed and the 1963 Studebaker Lark Regal and they're all three speed. Uh, it just so happens all these cars have overdrive but we're not going to talk about the overdrive today. We'll do that in another video. We're just going to drive them like they were straight three speed cars. Wow. Cars rolling. <clears throat> but no seat belts. No seat belts. <laughs> All right, so why do they start with three speeds, not just go straight to five? Okay, three speeds. Okay, back in that day, engines were fairly large, slow turning uh, with a lot of torque. And for most driving situations, three speed was enough. First gear was enough to get you moving. And then you spent the rest of the time until you came to a stop again in second and third gear. Right. And that was considered sufficient. Three-speed column shifts have a bit of a bad reputation, and that's because, well, they're all old and most of them are worn out by now. Mm. And, uh, yeah, they've been abused, and also they're more sensitive to how you shift them than a floor shift would be because there's a lot more linkage involved. Ah. So I just want to show this little diagram here. I'm going to slip this over the gear shift lever. It goes like this. The, the normal position is second and third. If you pull it towards you, you get first and reverse. Okay? All right. It's very simple, straightforward. Reverse, first, second, third. Now this is what you don't want to do. You see, this is an H pattern. And uh, if you shift your column shift with an H pattern, you will have very little trouble. Up, over, up, and then down. What you don't want to do is this. This is what I call the Bermuda Triangle. Ah. Ah, yes, skip the Bermuda Triangle because if you try and sort of smear the gear shift from first up to second with one little diagonal push, uh, it'll get hung up mm -hmm. and you'll have to stop on the side of the road and put the car back into neutral. Nah. Uh, yeah, let's not do that. But the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. If I'm in a rush... If you're in a rush, then you get to stop on the side of the road and get your hands dirty uh, as you straighten so out your worn out... Okay, less okay. efficient again. <clears throat> so this is, the, uh, this is the 1950 Studebaker, and uh, this has close to 100,000 miles, but it has very little play in the gear shift because Studebaker made a really good column shift. But let's, uh, let's just go for a drive and try this thing out. All right. And they all start differently. <laughs> Stupid six-volt cars are so hard to start. Okay, you did that without turning the key. <laughs> you turn the key first and you pressed on the clutch? You just press the clutch down. Yeah. Was that fine? We'll do it again. Okay, sure. Sure. Turn, turn the key, key on. 
<laughs> and the nice thing is, if you stall the car in traffic, mm -hmm. you don't have to flail around looking for the key. Just press the clutch down hard, and the car restarts. So I was... and no one will even notice that you made a mistake. All right, so all right, we're we're ready to go here. So all right, um, right. A gentle touch is all that's necessary. Bring the gear shift to you and down, and that's first gear. That looks like it's broken. <laughs> it does. Ah, it's fine. I know. <laughs> that was the emergency brake. That was the emergency brake. Now, when were emergency brakes common in cars? Oh, I'm were... guessing at first there wasn't any. Oh, uh, no. They pretty well always had oh, okay. emergency brakes. <laughs> okay. Now, check out how easy this is. Wow. It's just that easy down into third. And uh, yes, you can grab the gear shift and cram it up into second, or you can just take your finger and push it, and uh, your car will last a lot longer. I usually shift column shift with one finger. Mm -hmm. um, the zero to 60 times on this car, nothing to write home to mother about anyway, so shifting a little faster is not going to help that. Right. Okay, I'm gonna come up here. There's gonna be a corner up here and slow down for the corner and we'll go up the hill in second gear. Okay. So here we are coming into a corner, mm -hmm. uphill corner. There's no sense shifting ahead of time. Come around the corner and up she goes. So how do three speeds handle in weather? Like harsh weather, like the snow or... Oh, um, do you have to be a really skilled driver to understand your no, car? You use, you use the, in snow, just like you would with any modern car, you stay in the higher gear so that the rear wheels or so that the wheels don't lose traction. All right. So we are in third gear currently? We are in third gear, and it just pulled that incredibly steep hill in third gear because it's a Studebaker. <laughs> well, that's why we don't drive Chevrolets. <laughs> so third gears are different than fifth gears anyway. They would deliver a, a certain amount of power. Yeah. This uh, third gear in this car, the way the, this car is geared, is good for tops about 60 miles an hour um, because it's actually made to run in overdrive. Uh -huh. So we're going down the steep hill. We just stay in the second gear. Now, something that can happen um, on these old three speeds, first gear is not synchronized. And so if you try and shift into first gear while the car is still rolling at any sort of significant speed, it's gonna clash. So just uh. wait until you're stopped and then pick up first gear. If you're really careful, you can snick it in while the car is rolling slowly, but it's better just to wait. Another thing that happens because these are straight cut gears on the, the first gear is that sometimes you'll go to put it in gear and it won't go. That's because the, the teeth are just like that. Mm -hmm. So you just let the clutch out, let the transmission spin a little bit, and in she goes. No worries. Right, nice. so I noticed the, uh, mm -hmm. the pedals go through the floor as opposed to up underneath the dashboard. Mm -hmm. Is that a engineering reason there? The engineering, well, it was an engineering reason. It was easier for them in those days to build the chassis with the pedals mounted to the chassis. Ah, okay. So we'll just leave this here right now. Okay, now we'll try another Studebaker. This is a 1963 Lark. They made the uh, the steering column a little bit more streamlined looking. Uh, that also made the column shift a slightly less reliable. You'll see this has a lot more play in it than the uh, older car. It still works just fine, but all the more reason on this car to shift using the H pattern, because if you don't, she'll end up hung up. Let's see how this one goes. Ah, stupid cars with points are so hard to start. <laughs> Off we go. This car is fantastic on the highway. See, with three speeds, they require the engine to be far more flexible. Ah. Uh, so, down to, you know, a thousand RPM pulling a steep hill 
and then up to 4,000 RPM shifting. Same pattern. Same pattern. All gears in the same place. All the gears are in the same place. That's absolutely the American standard. Just remember to do your each pattern and everything's going to be all right. So I just like to point out that most American cars of these era, of these eras, second gear is extremely flexible. You can go down to, I don't know, two miles an hour mm -hmm. and then accelerate. You don't have to shift to first. It's just, ah. a, waste. It's just a waste of your time. So here I'm, I'm, I'm cheating this, well the stop sign's missing. So you just go to second. <laughs> there's, no, there's no need to drop all the way to first. The engine right. will pull it and you're just, because this is the shop truck. Nice. Oh my <clears throat> Okay, for all you Packard fans, the, the, the post-war Packard column shift was pretty darn good. The pre-war Packard column shift, so-called handy shift, not so much. Not, not so handy. <laughs> not so handy. <laughs> Um, really reward you by very carefully following the H pattern. Okay. Uh, especially a, like a 1941. If you if you go like this, you'll be stopping on the side of the road. Wow. And rearranging your gear. Again, you just do your H pattern. Think H. Think think not Bermuda Triangle. Think H. Like any other stick shift car, if you're driving in the mountains or steep hills, and you're going down a steep hill, remember you have drum brakes, so just shift it into second. Uh -huh. 